Hello everyone, today I have a video that shows my process for making swatches for my very large collection of mists. Uh, I recently got some handed down mists from a friend of mine, which took my collection from a fairly large collection of mists to a very, very large collection of mists. I now have 80. And so I do have them displayed here. And uh, when I posted this on Instagram, there was enough interest in both the color swatching process as well as in the storage solution that I have here for me to make a video. So this is gonna be my color swatching video. And then I'm also going to make a separate video about that beautiful display case, which is a nail polish display unit. And today in this video, I'm just going to show you how I came up with these swatches. So I started with 80 pieces of paper that were cut to two inches by four inches. This is the exact perfect size to fit inside of the Stampin' Up! Tab Punch. Tag punch, not tab punch. And so what I did was I basically cut down 12 by 12 pieces of very inexpensive white paper and I uh, cut them all down into these first four inch strips and then I cut them into two inch pieces and then I punched them. And I did that in twos and threes just to speed up the process a little bit. Then I put out my mist containment unit and these are pieces of foam core board that I just got from the dollar store. They're fairly large pieces of foam core board. I got them in black just because I had black ones hanging around my house uh, for some other project or something. And so I took, I think it, it took three large pieces of these. Two of them are kept at the regular size and then one of them is cut in two. Then I use packing tape to create doors on one of them. I can show you those a little bit more closely in a separate video. Um, I have one of the doors closed just so that as I'm misting, you can see my beautiful mists off to the side there. So as you can see, this is fairly inexpensive cardstock. It curls right up as soon as the, as the liquid in the mists uh, kind of starts to soak into the paper, but that's okay. You don't need to have super high quality uh, samples here. I just wanna know what these mists look like in, in person. So as you can see, some of them, the mists don't work. And it's mostly for the Heidi Swap Color Shine ones because they have so much of that kind of pigment in the bottom, that metallic y type of pigment. It sits at the bottom and it does tend to clog up the nozzle. And uh, that's fine. I don't typically mist anyways, uh, but I do want to know which ones, for which ones the mists work and for which ones they don't. I could go and for anyone that the mist doesn't work, I could go to my kitchen sink and run some warm water through it and clean it out and get it working again. But the chances that I'm going to need these mists for misting purposes are pretty low. And so I'm just doing some splatter on the ones that won't mist. Then also, as I'm looking at the samples, I'll know which ones I can mist easily and which ones might involve a, a bit of a time commitment to clean out the nozzle. But I kind of know already because it's mostly just the Heidi Swap color shine ones that don't mist. There are a few of the Mr. Hueys that are clogged as well. Most of my mists are either Mr. Hueys, which you can't buy anymore. They were made by Studio Calico. And then for a while they were called Color Theory Mini Mists. And uh, so the, those are what most of my, my collection is. I also have several of the Heidi Swap Color Shine, which have a, a bit more of a shiny metallic, uh, glimmery kind of sense to it. And uh, then I also have some by Shimmers, which is a smaller company that makes uh, a variety of different kinds of mists. Some of them are very pastel and translucent and others are more opaque. They also make paints and a couple of other products for mixed media. And then I also have some Dilutions, which is a Ranger product that very highly pigmented. And what I love about the Dilutions, and it's the same with the Mr. Hueys, is that you don't have to shake them as much. I'd give it a shake anyways, but it seems to me that they're a lot more like reinkers in that it's just a very pigmented, it doesn't separate over time. Uh, these Mr. Hueys are very, very, very old and I'm shaking them, but you're, I really don't think I had to. 
So as you can see, I'm just going through, I'm misting, I'm spraying, and this is how I get the splatter on my scrapbook pages, is I just open it up and I use the little, the little straw part of the nozzle to grab some of the of the fluid and I just flick it onto the page. So these samples of uh, of splatters are going to give me a really good idea of how these will look on a scrapbook page. And what I'm doing, I have a bit of a system here where I'm spraying on the one pile of paper towel and then I'm drying it on two other doubled up strips of paper towel so I can fit about five on each one of those and 10 fits in a row. So that allows me to do that. What I didn't show you on this video is that ahead of time, I actually wrote out the names of all of my mists. So it says the brand. So it's either MHMC, which uh, no, MHCM, which is Mr. Huey's Color Mist or HS. CS, which is a Heidi Swap Color Shine, or Shimmers, and, and or Dilutions is the other one that I have. And so as you can see, I'm kind of gathering them up and when I have my two strips full, that means I've gone through a full row of my little nail polish holder tray and then I just move them over further on my desk so that they can dry a little bit more before I pile them up on top of one another just in case they're still a little bit wet. So I kind of have the misting and gathering phase right here and then as this gets filled up I'll just move it over to my Tim Holtz glass mat that you see off there in the distance. And I'm getting to my neutrals now. So I have all of my colors in towards the front of this, uh, of this unit. And there's two units here, by the way, and I'll show that in a separate video. And then my neutrals are more towards the backs. And I made it organized by color, by rainbow color, but um, kind of in bands so that uh, everything over to the left is reds and pinks and then it goes over from oranges to yellows to greens to blues to purple i only have two purples um, and all of my neutrals are on the very very back row i do have a separate video that shows that nail polish holder and uh, how i use it i use i have six of those and i use it for a variety of different products storage in my scrap room so you can check that video out i'll be making it right after i finish this one so there i'm well into the neutrals now and i've decided to use a circle punch here and use some black paper to just show how some of these show up or don't show up on black cardstock uh, most of them I would never even try to put on black cardstock, but there are a few like the metallics and the whites and creams that I just want to know, do they show up on black or not? Because some of them do and some of them don't. So I just wanted to, to kind of remember that. So the Heidi Swap Gold, by the way, shows up the best on black. The, the Mr. Huey's Gold right here, as you can see, it just kind of sinks right into the black cardstock but the silver shows up really great and uh, the rose gold shows up amazingly well this is color theory rose gold it's one of the only new ones that I have and it's I say new but they don't make them anymore so it's not that new <laughs> So here I go with all of my neutrals. At first, this was all that I had of my Mr. Hueys. The very first Mr. Hueys I bought was a set of neutrals. It used to be really hard to get the, the colored ones, at least in Canada, it was really hard. So I'm all done now, and all that I had to do was put them all on a binder ring, and here they are. I did organize them by color spectrum instead of they were organized by row, because that's the way that I sprayed them. But I just wanted to be able to look at all my pinks together, and all my blues together, and all my greens together. The thing that I learned is that there are a, there is a lot of overlap between the different colors, so I have a lot of incredibly similar colors to one another. 
color. So uh, you definitely do not need 80 mists and I would not have 80 mists were it not for um, being on design teams and uh, just kind of collecting a lot of things over a lot of years. And then my friend, of course, just gave me a big, huge Ziploc bag filled with additional mists, which was actually really great because I was missing a couple of my favorite colors. So it was nice to kind of fill out my collection, but absolutely you do not need this many mists. So this is how my color swatch ring looks up close. As you can see, it's organized by color, not by row. So I did get reorganize them. And I really think that this is going to be helpful. I used to have my mists, some of my mists swatched, but it was kind of willy nilly. Some of them were swatched and some of them weren't. And it was kind of hard to tell by the labels what color looks like what on paper. So I think I'm going to really enjoy having these. This was super simple. Using the punch was very, very easy. It only took me a few minutes to punch all of these. There's 80, uh, tags right here and I punched a little bit more just so that if I made some mistakes it took I think three pieces of no it took six pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock it, I think in order to do this so what I did before I started misting that you didn't see on screen was I actually wrote down the names of each of the colors so this is Mr. Huey's color mist in gold and I just put that on the backs this is Heidi Swap Color Shine in gold. This is Mr. Huey's Mini Mist Rose Petal. And this one is by Color Theory. So I just put that in, in brackets. That's the only one of those that I have. Mr. Huey's, Mr. Huey's, Heidi Swap, White, uh, Mr. Huey's Classic Tan. Um, so yeah, I just used, there's shimmers and for shimmers, I would put the brand shimmers and then whatever kind of shimmers it was. So I have vibes and I have mists as well, as well, or I can't, I can't quite remember the names of them all. I can find one here. Yeah. Vibes and spritz. Those are the two that, oh, and colorings. So I have two different kinds of shimmers, three different kinds of shimmers as well. So now whenever I need to use my mists, it'll be easy for me to predict how it's going to look on at least on white cardstock and for some of them how it'll look on the black cardstock. So thank you so much for watching this video and if you are interested in learning more about my nail polish holder that I use, I get it on Amazon. I'm going to link it in the information section below so you don't have to watch the next video. But if you'd like to see more about how I use that and why I love it so much, and also a quick little hack, I'm using the word hack loosely here, but a little idea I have for storing them around your craft room, just check out the next video after this one on my channel. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.